My name is Holger Karl. I'm going to teach this winter semester's class on Future Internet. I'd like to introduce myself here in this video and give you some background on the material we are going to talk about in this class, as well as on administrative issues. So, as I said, my name is Holger Karl. Um, I've been here in Paderborn for now over 15 years and I'm leading the Computer Networks Group. Um, you can see here the information you need to reach me. Uh, preferably send me an email if you need, want to talk to me or want to make an appointment. Um, there's my office number and usually I would have regularly scheduled uh, office hours, but uh, given Corona this makes that a little bit difficult. So I suggest you send me an email to make an appointment if you want to talk to me. There's also the web page of our, of our group if you want to get some content or context of what we are doing uh, regularly. You will find there that uh, we are doing research in, as you might guess, computer networks, uh, meaning both wireless and wired networks, topics like network function, network softwareization, um, or wireless communication. So, what I'm going to talk about here a little bit more in detail is uh, the topic of this course, uh, possible prerequisites, how we are going to run this course uh, from an administrative point of view, and I'll give you a couple points on the literature that might help be helpful to follow this class. So the topic or the title of the class is Future Internet. Yes, admittedly, that's uh, an umbrella term and a little bit of a buzzword. What I mean by this title is that I want to talk about current developments in internet research, in data centers, in the internet at large, in wide area networking. A lot of interesting things are happening, a lot of interesting topics are currently under discussion, and these are topics I want to discuss with you here. Now, unlike you might expect from a bachelor class on computer networking, this is not a single coherent presentation of a single topic. We are going to talk about various issues, various uh, technologies, systems, idea, research questions. Uh, so we expect big, jump, big jumps from topic to topic rather than this one single coherent textbook-like presentation. The idea is that after this class, you should have the necessary background material to be able to do research in this uh, area uh, to get you started for a possible master thesis, maybe even as a, maybe later on for a PhD job or getting an interesting job in industry, be it in networking industry specifically or more general in uh, IT industry that is interested in networking. So specifically, that means we're going to look at four main chapters. Uh, the first part is dealing with packet switch networks. Uh, this is material that you really should know already from uh, a bachelor class in principle, the idea that you have switches that work on packets. Uh, but we are going to dig more into details here. And we look into how to build switches and high performance switches. We will look at how to schedule packets going over a link and we'll look at uh, different aspects of congestion control, buffer management, also building towards uh, the later chapter on data center networking. So this is the first part uh, of a couple chapters dealing with packet switch networks, uh, familiar technology to most of you, I'm sure. In a second part of the class, we'll talk about, in a second part of the class, we'll talk about circuit switch networks. Circuit switch networks are probably less familiar to most of you. Um, uh, it's in a sense a very old-fashioned technology. Think old-fashioned telephony networks where you have people plugging cables together in order to connect one telephone with another. Uh, in a sense, the historic background of networking. But here we're looking at circuit switch networks from a very technology-driven perspective, namely optical networking. We'll figure out that optical networks are naturally modeled as and operated as, an op as a circuit switch network. And we look both at the technology behind that and, as, uh, and at the technologies on top of that to make use of such circuits with networks. In particular, we'll talk about MPLS in some detail. Then we move on to a third part, uh, which talks about network softwareization. The idea there is that we no longer think of a network as a rigid, fixed infrastructure where you basically only have the ability to put in a new switch which comes in pre pre-installed, predefined in its behavior from the vendor. Rather, we think of the network as something that we can program. 
And we can program both the forwarding behavior, what happens when a packet arrives at a switch, what can we do with such a packet, uh, from the perspective of simple forwarding. We'll also look at what can we do to operate on such a packet. And this is often called a middle box, because it's a box sitting in the middle of a data path inside the network that operates on a network in the sense, for example, of a firewall, in a very simplistic example. Or a more interesting example might be uh, something that is transcoding videos. If you think of a cellular wireless network, uh, when people start downloading high-resolution high videos, it's probably not a good idea to squeeze that over a narrow-band wireless link. So we, we might want to transcode the video down to a smaller resolution uh, to be more amenable to the network uh, that we have available. That's the idea of middle boxes. And conventionally, these middle boxes are also rigid, fixed boxes that you buy from a vendor. But that also has become programmable by means of virtualization technologies that we know from cloud computing. And hence, then this is a function executed in the network. We talk about network function virtualization. We virtualize the functions that a network does. And that will keep us busy for, for a couple chapters in the second half of the class. The last main area will be data center networking. We look at how to build data centers from a networking perspective. And I'm thinking here of big, huge data centers, hundreds or thousands of servers, how to connect them, what are good topologies to do that, what are good technologies to set up switching and routing, how to operate that. And we look at, for example, at congestion control again, but now in a data center where the technological parameters, where the circumstances of the scenario are very different from congestion control in a wide area network. This will conclude the force of the four main parts of that. And then we'll see. We'll see whether there is still time permitting. Uh, and then we could do some odds and ends, some interesting chapters, if you like. For example, deterministic networking, putting some determinism into Ethernet, maybe 5G style slicing of a network in individual subnetworks. But we'll see. Uh, that we can discuss later on what piques your interest. Um, and I'll be happy to, uh, to adapt to what might be of interest to you. Realistically speaking, I don't expect there will be much time towards the end here. So uh, with this uh, chapter plan and content plan, what should you have as prerequisites here? Now, you absolutely, definitely, no discussion there, you need a bachelor class on computer networks. It doesn't have to be the computer networks class that I'm teaching here in the bachelor. It doesn't really matter. The material of these classes typically is fairly standard. Uh, but you need to have such a class or from some other sources, you need to have really good knowledge about that. Um, typical textbook in such classes might be the books by Tannenbaum, Stallings or the Kurosi Ross textbook. All of them are just fine. Uh, if you think you want to read up on them, pick any of them, search for these author names and computer networks and you'll find them immediately. Um, if you think we need a refresher, uh, we can do some background material, uh, do a quick and dirty uh, review of the material there. But for that, I would like your input. Uh, what are the material that we should cover again? But that's sort of uh, off topic and uh, a side, side note then. Now, as I said, this is absolutely necessary. Uh, if you did not have such a class, I really cannot in good conscience recommend that you take this future internet class. You will not have fun. You will not enjoy this because I'm not going to re-explain everything from this bachelor class. What is additionally helpful is some understanding of computer architecture, something that you probably had in your computer science uh, bachelor. Uh, Definitely, if you had something like a computer engineering class, here I'm talking about what is a cross bus switch, uh, how does caching work, etc., etc. That should be helpful, but it's probably not totally mandatory. What is also going to be helpful is some understanding of stochastics. Um, we'll do, for example, uh, a Markov chain analysis. Uh, it'll probably be easier for you if you have seen that before, but this is also something, the Markov chain part, for example, is something that you can. Uh, cover relatively easily if you had some basic stochastics. But I'm sure in any decent bachelor program, you had a math class on stochastics, statistics, probability theory. Um, 
What could also be helpful a little bit, but much less important than the Markov chains, is queuing theory, which in a sense is a specialization in any case. Uh, there will be the occasional queuing theoretic argument, um, specifically in the congestion control context, but that's a relatively small part of the class. So I wouldn't worry too much if you are not familiar with that. That is easy to, uh, to cover up in a sense. So to repeat, definitely a bachelor class on computer networks. No questions asked. The other stuff is useful, but maybe not totally necessary. Okay, on to some administrative issues. How are we going to run this class? Now, typically, I would now talk about that we meet in, in, in person uh, twice a week and how this lecture works and that I want to interact with you during the lecture, etc., etc. But um, as you know, there's this Corona COVID-19 thing that makes these plans a little bit more difficult. So. The current plan, let me emphasize the word current here. This is all uh, subject to change uh, if uh, things change with respect to the epidemic situation. But the current plan as of today, early September, is we do an online class in the sense of a flipped classroom. That means I will produce screencasts for all lectures. They are also screencasts available from the last time I talk this, taught this class but they are probably the audio quality is not totally perfect and I've been using the blackboard in these past classes which were in-person classes so um, that's probably not so easy to follow so we'll do a reproduction we do a re-recording of all the lectures here for this online classroom version that will mean that I will do videos like this one with uh, slides provided um, my face provided if you think that's necessary I doubt it will be useful but um, you let me know what you prefer um, plus any possible scribbling I will do possibly on slides possibly on a separate uh, blackboard style thing I will provide all that both in the video as well as downloadable PDFs so no need to worry about me writing something it'll be visible to you and available to you now what does that mean um, it's a 6 LP uh, class three LPs out of which LP, Leistungspunkte, ECTS, European Credit Transfer System points, uh, three LP uh, lecture out of these six LP. That means uh, at 90 minutes for these 22.5 slots, uh, you can expect about 34 hours of video material there. That's a lot, uh, but we'll, we'll somehow get there. It's a 15 weeks class, so this, this is what this boils down to. In addition, uh, there's one LP for the homework and for the course achievement. I'll talk about that on a separate slide. Now, material for that, um, we will use Panda, um, University of Paderborn's uh, teaching system. And I'm sure you know Panda already. Uh, if not, you will become familiar with it very quickly, I'm sure. It's a Moodle version. Um, we will use Panda to distribute the slides and to distribute the homework assignments. I'll make the screencasts available via a separate server. Panda is not really suitable for that. Uh, I'll see whether I can also upload that, that on YouTube if necessary and uh, suitable. So most of the material there, except for the screencasts, is already available and already present. So you can look at that whenever you feel like it. In addition to the lecture uh, and in addition to the homework, uh, there's the problem of the course achievement, right? So it's a 6LP class, so there's a course achievement, uh, German word is Studienleistung, um, and we'll do it as follows. Uh, you need to hand in some uh, homework assignments, and I'll talk about that in the following slide as well. Now, let me remind you, a flipped classroom is something that works as follows. It's a, still a classroom. It's in Corona times, of course, an online classroom. But what that means is we will do question and answer sessions during the regularly scheduled class times. Um, see Panda for the detailed schedule for that. Uh, most likely we will do this uh, online session using Big Blue Button. Again, see Panda for details and, and the links for that. Now, for these Q&As, for that to make sense, the assumption is that you have watched the relevant video clips before attending the Q&A session. Now, for each of these sessions per week, I'll post which of the chapters are relevant and which are sort of the intended material to be discussed. Um, 
if nobody asks anything for these concrete chapters that are intended for this particular uh, Q&A session, you're of course welcome to ask other questions as well regarding homework, regarding previous material. It doesn't really matter, but I will give priority uh, to the material that is scheduled for that particular session. Now, that all being said, um, we've done that similarly in the summer semester and, um, well, to be honest, there were not that much uh, participation happening during these sessions. So, I don't know whether this was good or bad, whether everything was fine without it, I doubt it. Uh, I can only strongly encourage you to attend these Q&A sessions and ask whatever you think is not well explained, is not covered. There's no question too stupid. There's no question too simple. Please go there, right? In addition, uh, we'll also do an offline version um, without direct interaction. And for that, we use a chat system based on Zulip. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that before. There's also the link uh, for the Zulip chat for this particular class. Um, again, I can only strongly encourage you to use that. Okay, that much being said, let's move on to the homework assignment. Um, so there are homework assignments already in Panda. Um, they will have deadlines very soon. I still need to plan that for uh, a bit more in detail once we have done more class recordings to see how, how the class progresses. But each of these homework assignments will have a deadline. You will need to submit any two of them to clear the course achievement. And by submit, I don't mean just to submit them, you need to submit them successfully. So I will read that through, I will grade that, and I will let you know by individual feedback whether I think this was okay or whether you should improve that. Only then, only if you have two successfully graded homework assignments, you will have the course achievement, and only then are you allowed to take the exam. Now, I'm not going to be terribly picky, but I still think you need to invest time uh, into these homework assignments to actually know what's going on, to really understand the class material for that. You need to work on that. Now, after these deadlines for these homework assignments, we will also discuss them during the class times uh, in a Big Blue Button online session. I'll also make solution hints uh, available in Panda. Uh, this is maybe not the perfect solutions for that, but hopefully it helps uh, to understand the material better. Now, let me emphasize again, it's any tool. I think this is a perfectly achievable and perfectly manageable requirement, specifically since you can freely choose which of them to pick and since they are already all online in Panda. So you can now, even now, think about which of the two you want and plan your course ahead of time and plan your workload for the semester ahead of time. So you have a lot of flexibility there. And I hope that is, uh, that's an achievable uh, barrier towards the course achievement. And finally, lastly, to help work with that material even more, uh, in Panda there are also self-tests. They are quizzes based on Panda. They are not graded in any sense. I will not look at who achieved what uh, points on the self-test. They are strictly for your own use. Most of them are just multiple choice tests. Now, to, to warn you off, I think this is useful. This is useful to drive your own understanding and to monitor your own progress. Uh, it's also probably a lower barrier than handing in the, uh, the homework assignments. This is substantially more work than doing a multiple choice quiz uh, in Panda, which probably takes five to 10 minutes to do that. But it's still probably useful and I still encourage you to take that seriously and to invest uh, sufficient um, neatness and accuracy and enthusiasm in these self-tests. Nevertheless, if you think that after you have successfully answered all these pen or self-tests, you are able to take the exam and get a perfect grade, you are sadly mistaken. This is lower limit requirement. This is not the top notch that you need to understand. So this is a good keyword. So let's move on to the exam. The exam is going to be an oral exam. Uh, Corona permitting, preferably we do the oral exam in person here in a meeting room. So there's enough room uh, there should, that should work even under strict Corona requirements. If this does not work out, let's see how this develops. Uh, we can take these exams also online using BBB or Zoom or whatever is available then. 
Now, as I already said on the previous line, simply reproducing material or simply reproducing the material out of these multiple choice PANDA self-tests, this is not enough to pass, not let alone to get a good grade. We are far away from talking about a good grade in that sense. You need to be able to work with the material. You need to answer why style question. Why is that the case? Why did we design it like that? What are the trade-offs? How does system A compare to system B? Why are we doing it like that? What's the intention for that? What was the intuition behind that design? That's the type of things I typically ask in an exam. And you need to be able to do that. In, in an exam, you need to be able to answer these type of questions. Now, I'll do a separate video on how to to self-monitored and self-driven learning in, in such online situations and also to prepare for an exam. So I don't want to spend much time on this here now. Right, uh, with respect to an appointment for the exam, just send uh, an email to my secretary. She'll give you an appointment once we're done with the class. I strongly encourage also you take the exam quickly after the end of the lecture period so you don't lose uh, touch with the material. It usually, experience shows, it usually is a bad idea if people wait too long with these exams. So, finally, some words on material and literature. Um, as I said, the slides and the screencasts will be available via Panda. Slides already are, homework assignments are. That might already be enough for you to, to follow the class. If you want additional material, sadly, there is no single textbook available. There is sort of an approximation there. It's a book by Stallings, uh, Foundations of Modern Networking. That's okay on some of the chapters we are doing. It doesn't cover some of the material at all. For example, it doesn't really do optical networking. Um, also, the quality in that book is un 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 atypical and unusual for Stallings. The quality is not really great in all chapters, so some of them are okay, some are, mm, could have been better. Uh, still, it's kind of the best approximation um, to uh, what you could use as a single textbook. We'll also partially use research papers. I'll point you towards them. Um, they are referenced in the slides. Uh, and uh, that will give you background information on some of the material that's only touched upon in the slides then. So with that, uh, I think I've covered most of the administrative points I wanted to make here. And I hope you'll enjoy this uh, online screencast-based class, this flipped classroom. And I'm looking forward to interacting with you in the Q&A sessions uh, via BBB.